I clicked it. And now I'm going to refresh this over here. Still mm -hmm. not happening over there. <laughs> <laughs> Love this for me. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Dope. So we are now live, which is wild. <laughs> and the drama of it, we're just, we're just in it. We're in it right yeah. now. <laughs> we're rolling with it. It's good. Just to worry this, about. You know, just having a gay old time. That's what we it's do. That, exactly. <laughs> So, um, in case you haven't guessed, you're on my channel. So, I would hope you know this by now, but my name is Audrey. This is my channel, Perpetual Pages, where I geek out about books on the internet and make a fool of myself most of the time, but it's fun. I've been here for a while. <laughs> and I am so excited to be joined again by Julian Winters, an uh, amazing author of queer young adult books like Running with Lions, which was his debut. And how to be Remy Cameron. And on Yay! Tuesday, it will be adding the summer of everything to that oh. list, which is super exciting. I cannot wait for it to be out in the world. <laughs> so that's September 8th, next Tuesday, just a matter of days from now. Again, wild. Time, wild. <laughs> <laughs> Publishing, wild. <laughs> So, uh, Julian, uh, for anyone that watching who does not know, can you talk a little bit about yourself, your work, and how you would describe the summer of everything for anyone who does not know yet? Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, hi. Yeah, tell me your whole life am, story. <laughs> I know, right? Hi, I'm Julian Winters. I was born a Capricorn. Um, <laughs> what else? <laughs> I am <laughs> a young adult author, that is what I am most days, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, of young adult fiction. Um, I write contemporary fiction. Lord knows when I'll, you know, go out of there. Um, but I write contemporary <laughs> fiction a lot. Uh, all of my main characters and like 90% of the side characters will be uh, of LGBTQIA representation. I write diverse, inclusive stories, always filled with joy um, and just the most mundane, boring things, but also like <laughs> that's what we need. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, <laughs> just more of you know less of trauma. Um, mm -hmm. I let's see here. I like I started 2018 with Running with Lions. 2019 was How to Be Remy Cameron. Tuesday is the Summer of Everything, which I'm super excited about. Um, the Summer of Everything is about a comic book geek by the name of Wes Hudson. He is gay, he's black, he is living in Santa Monica, and it is the summer just before he starts his first um, year at college at UCLA. And he has two goals for the summer. One is to kick back at his local independent bookstore that he works at called Once Upon a Page with all of his teen friends. And then the second thing is to finally, finally confess his... Uh, two-year-long crush on his best friend, Nico. But all that gets thrown out of the window when he finds out this coffee shop franchise is coming in and buying up Once Upon a Page and shutting it down to open up their new coffee shop. So now he has to reorganize his whole summer to put his focus in trying to save the bookstore, which interferes with his plans to tell Nico how he feels. And rom-com goodness with a large heaping of what do you do after high school. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I didn't put this in the questions I sent you, but just came to me. I was always yeah. wondering, like, what sort of inspired uh, you for this story? Like, were you sitting in a Starbucks and you're just like, <laughs> what if this coffee threatened the livelihood of a local bookstore? <laughs> what if gentrification really just took me down? Um, <laughs> what did... Sit well, part of the reason I, this story came to me was because I just really needed a light, fluffy, you know, gay as F um, rom-com in my world. Um, mm. I, I, and I had a lot of those in the adult space. I could find a bunch of those in the adult space, but it was, at the time it was, I started writing this one in 2016, 2017, and mm. it wasn't as diverse and inclusive um, out in publishing as it is now. Um, it's just in, for, in far as terms of finding books, especially books that had representation that look and felt like me. 
Um, and so I just really needed that. And I also needed something just like fun to write. And yes. that's where it, it happened. And I happened to be watching oh. a lot of movies in there. I was just like, you know, wouldn't it be cool if I just did this in a bookstore since I do love to read? Um, and then I was watching Empire Records and I was like, wouldn't it be cool also if you threaten the bookstore <laughs> uh, being shut down? And it, it just all kind of came from there. Um, just this need to have that kind of book and that kind of story for us. And yes. Yeah. Yes. And then I don't know, everything else just kind of snowballed and I love it. <laughs> I love that. It's like, well, what what if I had this really cute space? And then what if I like destroyed it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What if I just turned it upside down? Why the capitalism not? and gentrification is great. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, that's, but in a fun happens. gay way. Yes, exactly. So like yes, anyone watching, like it works out. It's fine. It's all good. Not, yeah. You know. It's, yeah. Okay. We'll yeah. Say that. Happily ever after. <laughs> Happily ever after, guaranteed. Yes. <laughs> So like we were talking about, some of everything comes out in just a couple of days. Mm. So how are you feeling going into this release and does it feel different compared to your other books or like, where are you at with that? Um, I am anxious, most mm. definitely. It definitely does feel a lot different. Running With Lions was just like all about that excitement because it was like my debut book. It's like, oh gosh, I, I get to finally say I, I, I published something. So that was just like a whole ball of excitement. And then Hobby Remy Cameron was, um, super stressful <laughs> because that was definitely a very personal book. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was like, man, if people trash me or throw me out the window, I am going to be crushed forever. Mm -hmm. um, but with this one, it's so weird, you know, with the state of our world, constantly feeling, my mind is constantly shifting to other things that I have a book coming out, which is sad, but it's just it's just the way it is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I just get caught up in so many other things. So the fact that it's coming out on Tuesday, I'm just like, oh, wow, oh, this is happening. Okay, cool. But also, um, when is this other stuff gonna you know be done so I can go back to you know, my usual self. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, it's just a bag of mixed feelings, but also I've been getting some great feedback, a lot of love um, for the early readers for this book. So mm -hmm. I can't help but to, to be happy about everyone getting a chance to pick this book up and hopefully feel what the other readers feel. Now, if it's a whole other wave of things, I'm just gonna be like, you know what? I was never here. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about <laughs> it. Don't at me about it. It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's good. It'll be loved. It'll be needed. Um, it's the summer rom-com of our dreams. Yes, it's still summer. <laughs> <laughs> As someone living in California, I can tell you it's still summer out there. So <laughs> we need those vibes. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I think you've frozen, Julian. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> oh. Nope. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I was like, you're like frozen in one spot. I was like, it's cool. Uh, you are it's so fine. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love it. We're doing great. <laughs> I forgot to say, like, for everyone watching, that like, <laughs> just to peel back the veil. Some of you might be like, "Wow, wasn't Audrey supposed to talk to Julian Winters for Quarantine Pages like a little while ago?" Oh. Yeah. We did that. <laughs> we did that. Fun. It was great. Um, and then technology was like, oh, you wanted to save that? You wanted to <laughs> show that to other people? No. So this is like our our makeup, our we're putting it back into the universe. So I, I just I just think the universe is saying we need to make this like a weekly or monthly thing. That's all. Exactly. It's just saying we just need to chat all the time. <laughs> so you know, if if the Wi-Fi gets us this time, <laughs> you know, we're just rolling with it. It's fine. Yeah, we'll go again. No problem. We're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so to get back to your work, which is what we're here for. So something I love about your books is that they're super inclusive, which you kind of talked about. You said it's always going to have some kind of queer characters, POC characters, QPOC characters, love to see it. So like in the summer of everything, there's a supporting character who's non-binary, a supporting character who's arrow ace, a Latinx love interest, which again, love to see it, and so many more characters. So I would love to know what drives you to like explore those spaces and dynamics and how do you avoid making it feel like you're just checking off a box or like, you know, getting cookie points? <laughs> I well, one, I don't like cookies. Let the world know. So I'll <laughs> never do anything for cookie points. Um, 
No, for me, um, and I know it's not the same for everyone, but for me, I did grow up. Um, once I moved to Georgia, when I lived, I so I spent my early years in upstate New York in a predominantly white space. So I was like, like in my book, How to Be a Roman Camry, I really was one of maybe three to four black kids in the entire middle school um, and elementary school also. So I know what that space is like. But when I moved to Georgia, um, and when I went to high school, I was surrounded by diversity. You know, the, the school was not like one predominant, you know, type of person there. So for me, it just feels natural to do that when I'm writing is to have all this diversity. I can't go to the grocery store without seeing diversity. I can't go to um, Target without seeing it or hearing it or feeling it. So I just don't see why it shouldn't be in my writing. You know, it's just this natural thing for me. Um, and I just love to explore that. At the same time, I also know what it's like not to be seen. I also know what it's like to pick up a book or turn on a television show or watch a movie where I feel like, oh yeah, I should be there and I'm not. Or if I am, I am but just the background character. And I, I don't know about the rest of you know the world, but I just really don't like being the background character. Like I want to be a part of yeah. it. I yeah. want, you know, I I, I should have um I should have this this feeling inside of me that tells me I get to be the hero. I get to be the star. I get to be the love interest, or I get to be the best friend that pulls your ass out of the fire, or whatever you know it may be. That I should be able to have that. And so I never want someone to pick up one of my books and not feel the same way or not be able to connect with someone from a different race or sexuality or or gender or non-gender or you know, whatever. I don't want you to, to pick up one of my books and say, I sorry, can't relate. Yeah, it's, it's not what you know what I want. So I think that's what drives me to always know that I'm doing this from the heart, but I'm also doing this because I know what it's like to have something that you should automatically have taken from you from the jump. And I don't want someone to come into anything that I write feeling like that. Exactly. So it's like you want to like create places where people belong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's really nice. Love that. And to know yeah. that you belong, not to, not to feel like you're just being inserted in there because someone said so. You you do. Right. You, you're supposed to be in that. You're a part of it. Exactly. It's true. Yeah, it's exactly what you said. I mean, you can't go, at least in California, you cannot go anywhere oh, <laughs> yeah. without seeing, you know, just a different array of people. So it's like, exactly. whenever, especially in contemporary books, whenever that's like ignored, I'm like, what world is this? Like, <laughs> but how? Yeah, yeah, I don't know her. Like, this is like, <laughs> not how that works. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, to, on, the, on that note of talking about like your cast of characters, one of my favorite things from the summer of everything is that it has this really huge, amazing friend group and you really explore those intricate group dynamics. So how do you balance like the banter and the shenanigans and the summer fun and all that while still making space to like explore Wes's like emotional story? Um, I'm For this book, I think it was a, a little bit harder because I was having too much fun writing the banter and I was having too much fun with the friend group and I kept saying, oh, but wait, you have to deal with Wes's in internal conflicts and the ways that, you know, you, you want to make sure that your main character starts at one place and hopefully grows to someplace else by the end. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, so I guess I'll stop them, you know, roasting each other, or, you know, just <laughs> having fun in the bookstore and actually focus on Wes. Um, but one of the ways I do that though is, um, since I'm not a super serious person, I, I remind myself that I can delve into these topics, I can delve into these themes and still provide humor, still provide some kind of, some kind of realistic feel by you know, having these conversations between friends and having these conversations between Wes and sometimes people he doesn't know, just to kind of, ex it, it kind of explores who he is, but it also kind of gives you a little chuckle or it kind of gives you a nice feeling or it kind of gives you like, oh my God, can I relate kind of feel. Um, that's, I, that's what I focus on really, instead of making it such a heavy thing for myself, because when it becomes too heavy, then I, I, I shut down. I'm like, nope, I can't do no. this. Yeah, <laughs> nope. 
got to go to the side. Um, Absolutely. Which is not. funny because I, I, will, I will read a book like that and just be like, oh my goodness, I feel this. Oh, it's deep in my soul. But when it comes to me writing, I'm like, no, mm -mm, uh -uh. no. Just opening too it. many wounds. <laughs> And it kind of like reminded me of like it had that same sort of energy as I feel like running with lions. That was like the last book where you had like a really big group dynamic. So it was like, yeah. oh, yeah, the friendships. Like, <laughs> it's back. <laughs> yes, it's back. It's back. It's back. Um, it's, I felt it was easier for me to, to, to um, talk about some of the themes in the book by having that bigger friend group this time around. That's true. And then Wes can have like different conversations with different people. So it kind of brings more of a roundedness to that. So yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so again, the summer of ever uh, the summer of everything really made me think about how like all your stories are coming of age stories. So what do you think continuously draws you to this idea of like figuring yourself out and not always knowing who you should be or what you should do in life, which is like Huge question. <laughs> uh, it's always unintentional. I promise it's always unintentional that these books become some kind of coming of age art. Um, when really like seriously, when I sat down to write this book, I was like, I just really want to write about this best friend crush. So like, I, this is this is what I want to focus on. And then it turns into something else um, because I think um, no matter what situation or thing that we're going through in life, it always, you know, flips the camera on you and focuses back on, you know, how you're feeling about this and how you're feeling about other things that are happening in your life. Um, but one of the reasons I love exploring the topic of who am I or what do I want to do with my life is because even myself in my upper 30s, I still have moments where I'm not sure of mm -hmm. myself. I'm not, you know, social media is great and I can present myself as 100% secure and whatever, but on the inside, I am always questioning is, am I doing the right thing? Am I gonna succeed? Is this the path I'm supposed to take? Is this the journey I'm supposed to go on? It's, uh, so many questions that I still have that were amplified in high mm -hmm. school. I uh, like, some of the decisions I made in my senior year, I'm glad it, it, it took me to where I am now, but I would go back and change so many things. <laughs> um, but, relatable, relatable. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, and I think that's how, I think that's definitely a feeling when you're a teen on through to adulthood is this, who am I? Who am I? You know, who do I really feel like on the inside? And then what do I want to do with this person that I am? Um, and so I guess it's uh, it's always going to, always going to pop up in one of my books. Always. And yeah. it's kind of like we were saying last time we were talking, it's like you never truly come of age because it's just like more stuff to unpack, more stuff yep. to think about. Yeah, and more then, situations that occur that make uh, you rethink your whole life. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like a global pandemic. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that for all of us. <laughs> yes. Um, so another sort of interesting element of the story is that Wes has this tendency of making lists on his phone for like everything from things I love the most to best ways to ask out your best friend. And so that was like a throwback for me. It brought me back to like some YA from the early aughts, like the classic YA stuff. Good feels, very good stuff. <laughs> uh, so I'm curious to know why that was a component that felt important to Wes as a character. Um, it really, it started out with just one list. And I think through the first and second draft, it really was just the one list, which was the five things Wes loves most, mm -hmm. um, about California. Um, and then from there, I think I added in the, uh, five best ways to ask out your crush. And I was like, okay, these, this, these are good. Okay, great. Yeah. Then my editor was like, you know, there's this one element in the book that you should really like lean into, which is the list. And I was like, really? Cause I thought you were going to tell me to cut them because they just distract from the rest of the list. Yeah. She was like, no, build some more into it. Um, and I think it's because for me, a lot of the ways I work through um, issues or I work through things I don't know how to do or what to do is through lists um, mm -hmm. or through jotting stuff down um, just so I can see it and, 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 and kind of take it in and break it down. Um, it just sometimes makes me just feel good. When I make a list of things to do, it just makes my life feel 
like I'm more in control than everything else controlling me. Um, so yeah, it was just a, it was a fun way to explore Wes's thoughts, especially since it's written in third person. It's kind of a chance for the reader to really get into Wes's head and see, you know, how he feels or the way he deals with situations um, without me having to like write it all out in some kind yeah. of long paragraph <laughs> um, yeah. exposition and whatnot. Yeah. So, and like it's important, important to him as well. Yeah. Because he's exactly. like, right now, making, taking yeah. control of it. <laughs> and he's also kind of anxious. So it, it kind of goes back to like what you're saying is like, <laughs> I need order. I need control. <laughs> I need yeah, to write so down that. how I can get my best friend to be my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's just good to take all the different variables that life throws at you and say, okay, this is how I'm going to work it out and, and okay. go from there. Yeah. So that's how Wes deals with things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of curious, like, what do you think Wes would be making lists about now? <laughs> like in the, Oh my gosh. In the current times. <laughs> oh goodness. He, well, I think with everything that's going on, I think, he would probably be making list of ways I can hang out with my friends without risking, you know, life and death. Um, yes. He would be figuring out, he would definitely be figuring out ways to get his best food, to get, uh, you know, the food that he loves the most um, while dealing with the pandemic. Um, <laughs> and he would probably, um, I think Nico's mom would probably be like really strict about the quarantine. So he'd probably be, have a list of five ways to sneak my boyfriend out of his house kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> that's valid. Yeah. <laughs> As someone with a uh, Mexican family, that's valid. <laughs> 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 so uh, kind of going back and zooming out a little bit, looking at your whole, um, work so far, what would you say is different about the summer of everything compared to your first two books? Um, let's see. Uh, well, I'd say it's definitely different from Run of Lions because Run of Lions was like a whole exploration into sports, toxic masculinity. Um, I mean, it just dealt with so many different topics in a light fun way but it just dealt with a lot of different things um at once and with how to be remy cameron that one was just so layered in labels and stereotypes and dealing with that and figuring out again who am i but also figuring out who am i without the um labels everybody else puts on you and I, some of everything like i said i seriously just wanted to write a fun as hell book. I, I really did. And I think I, I think I did a fairly good job of keeping it so filled with humor and so filled with like this feel good vibe that that's how it differs, differs from the other books. Um, but again, I think they all have some central themes that I love exploring um, in young adult literature. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they're all, they're definitely all connected. They're definitely all in conversation with each other. <laughs> Some of everything has those Cali vibes. Can yes. confirm, can confirm. <laughs> Thank you. That was my Thank biggest you. part of this book. I was like, the, the, Cal, the Cali people are going to eat me alive for this <laughs> book. Like they are I would never. <laughs> you can make a fictional town in California and be like, oh yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, we don't all know every single town in California. It's a big state, okay? Yes. Well, there's a lot of different things happening here, so <laughs> I would I would never. <laughs> yeah. um, on a different note, I know you're very invested in pop culture, media, oh music, all that stuff, aren't so we bad. all? So, so, so what kinds of shows or characters or music or anything inspired you while you were writing The Summer of Everything? Um, let's see here. What was I watching? I was watching, like I said, a lot of rom-coms. Um, yeah, I, I, I really was. I mean, not just from studying the craft perspective, but just also, um, I needed like that, I don't know, that, that swoony feeling playing in the background. Like most of the times while I'm writing, I'll have the, I'm, I'm in a separate room from like where my TV and stuff, but I'll turn the TV and angle it so that I can kind of like peek out of the corner of my eye and I'll, I'll play a lot of rom-coms. So um, uh, definitely, uh, like I said, Empire Records, uh, High Fidelity, um, 
John Hughes, uh, a lot of his <laughs> old stuff, which let me just go ahead and, you know, <laughs> put out the warning there, does not always hold up um, true. in They're terms true. of great, I mean, still great comedic moments, but does not hold up in terms of like reality and the fact that like, yeah, those movies yeah. were not very diverse uh, yeah. at all. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I, I did a lot of that. Uh, in terms of music, I, I listened to a lot of 90s music while writing this, as you'll, you'll see from the book. A lot of 90s music <laughs> I listened to this. But I also listened to like a lot of like chill um, music that just made me feel good or, or music that had that like the 80s synth vibe to it. So like John Bellion, um, I listened to a lot of Laney, um, 1975, of course. Uh, I listened to... There was this group called Sleeper Agent. They're not together anymore, but I listened to a lot of their stuff. Like there's just so many, like the, the playlist is like 180 songs long. So I listened to a lot of music while writing this just because I just, I had to be in that that zone um, while writing. I had yeah. to feel like I was in California while I was not writing in California. <laughs> Difficult task. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, it uh, is. Ever like put like put out like a summer of everything playlist like uh, oh, not the no. whole thing but like you know like no, no, a bridge no. version no, of it. Yeah. You know, like nobody uh, wants to see that. <laughs> I never put so I have put out playlists for like Runner of Lions and How to Be Remy Cameron. They're on Spotify, um, and I will definitely sometime next week when I find the time put out the Summer of Everything playlist. Um, and it definitely will be a bridge version. I always put out those playlists as if it was like a movie soundtrack. So I I always force myself to pick like the the best fifteen to eighteen songs that relate. So that when someone's listening, they can like feel like they're in that moment, in that scene with the song playing in the background. So it's almost like you see it in your head like a movie. And that's what I go for when I um, put those playlists out there. So we'll see if I can achieve that, taking 180 songs down to 15. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank oh, you. my goodness. They're like hundreds and hundreds of songs long. I don't know how to edit. That's yeah. my problem. <laughs> and related to that, so kind of you just kind of touched on it a little bit, saying that it's you know in, a lot of music is involved in the story. But something Wes and Nico love to tease each other about is their very different taste in music. Oh my god! So I would love to know if there is an album that exists that you think they would actually happily listen to together from beginning to end. <laughs> Big question. <laughs> it's I don't know because like Wes is like the quintessential um black kid who loves alternative rock. And then Nico loves like hip hop and R and B. So that's an interesting combination to try to. <laughs> I'm trying to think of an artist that does it so well from start to finish because it's even hard for me to find an album now where I listen to every song from start That's to true. finish without like skipping. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Julian, I sent you this question in advance. I know. <laughs> I tried to think of it too. I really did. I'm going to say, um, I think they could meet on common ground uh, with Don Bellion's, oh God, what is the name of that album? I have to look it up. Uh, I think his first album, oh gosh. I can't remember the name of it. Um, <laughs> and it's on my phone, so I will get it for y'all. But I think, I think they could find common ground there because I think he does a good job of mixing genres uh, and giving like different vibes with every song. And I think there'll be ways that, you know, Nico would try to convince Wes to like a song. And then like the next song, Wes would probably try to convince Nico to like the song kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, back and forth. So I'm, I'm gonna go with that, yes. Regina Renee says, I think they were both like Michael Franti. <gasps> I have not heard this artist much, but. And hello, Amazon. Oh, <laughs> my music at. Oh, There's no, our resident no, no, no. librarian giving us the best suggestions. Thank you, Regina <laughs> Renee. <Yeah. laughs> Need it. <laughs> Google it, save it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hello, it's phone is already moving. <laughs> so, um, like I mentioned, uh, we did have our discussion on quarantine pages, which, which now only exist in our memories and our hearts, which is fine. That's 
a beautiful and place. And all for the people showed up though, because that's that was true. a good crowd. That's that was true. a good crowd. It was, and I love them. <laughs> and I was remembering some of the questions they asked. So this is sort of like the audience question portion. And anyone watching, if you want to leave a question in the comments in the live chat, just do it. I got Kathy watching that for me. So um, our first question I remembered from my wonderful friend, Bree from Locked, Bu Locked Booktician was, can you talk about how important black joy is in your work? Yeah, um, I wish I could do it as eloquently as I did last time. Uh <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm trying not to think about it. <laughs> in our hearts, in our memories. <laughs> I know, right? No, I was in a moment then though. I think uh, I, I was dealing with a lot that day, so I was in a moment. Um, <laughs> So for me, growing up, um, and I know times are different from for people growing up now versus when I grew up. Uh, but for me, a lot of the representation when it came to Black people, like the most famous movies or you know the most talked about movies and stuff like that, were always about Black pain and Black trauma and slavery and racism. And like I, I just grew up struggling so much with my existence in the world because all that was taught to me and all that was shown to me was that I'm going to suffer. Right. No matter what I go through, no matter what place I'm in life, I'm going to suffer and I am going to continuously be beat down. I'm going to be continuously fighting to prove that I am worth existing in this world. Um, and I always told myself I would not give that to someone else. I would not present that to someone else in any form possible because I don't feel as a black person, you should be repeatedly told that your existence is something you have to fight for. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of the main reasons I write about black joy because we are so much more than our pain. We are so much more than our trauma. We are so much more than the struggles we have to face day to day. We are filled with a multitude of wonderful things. And I think it's so important to remind the black reader um, that yes, you deserve joy. You shouldn't have to earn it. It shouldn't be something you have to fight for. It should be existing in you day to day. You should be proud. You should be happy. You should know that your existence matters. Um, and so that's why I give them Black joy. That's why I give non-Black people Black joy also because they need to see me. They need to see other Black people as more than just pain, as more than just trauma, as more than just racism, as more than the fact that we've lived in slavery forever or that we're, you know, our bodies are being left dead and battered in the street. We are more. And so non-Black readers need to see that. They need to see our joy so that they see beyond the fact that all we do is suffer. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's why I write about Black joy because it's so important to remind people, I'm human. Black people yeah. are human. We deserve to have joyful moments. Um, and so I will always include that in my writing. I will always make that my main priority uh, because without it, I feel like the struggle to exist just becomes harder and harder. It's true. And yeah, it's just like you said, it's so important to see um, black characters, queer characters, QPSC characters being successful and joyful and powerful. I feel like that was a big thing in How to Be Rebby Cameron, that feeling of like, uh, we deserve to like be happy together and just like have what we have. And I, I remember reading that and being like, yes, like we do. Like, yes, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> so you're here for it. Black joy, queer joy, queer black joy go off anytime you want because <laughs> we need those in the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Paolo wants me to tell you that Wes is the most relatable character ever. So. Wow. <laughs> Thank High you praise. so much. I read your review, by the way. I love the bookmarks. Um, like, need to figure out a way how to print them out and use them for myself. Um, everyone else, please go check out that review. I think I... I, I I retweeted, yeah, I retweeted. So go check that out and get yourself some free bookmarks and interview. Um, but thank you. That that means the world to me. Love it. And I now have some bookmarks to go print out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Noria from Noria the Reader wanted to know which of your books would you give to your younger self? I feel like I know the answer, but go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How to be Remy Cameron, hands down, I would give to my younger self because um, I grew up having so many different identity issues because I was presented and told this is how I'm supposed to be as a young black uh, male. 
and mm -hmm. it like I felt like I did I never got the chance to be myself in high school because I carried around all the labels that everyone else stuck on me instead of getting to define who define who I was. So that would definitely be a book that I, I gave to myself. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> it's wild. Like here's how to navigate all the messiness. <laughs> Have it. <laughs> Out there, kids. <laughs> And uh, Sarah said, if you could give a theme song to the main characters of the Summer of Everything, which songs would they be? Woo! Another hard question. Um, no, I love how you send me these questions and I still don't have a <laughs> um, read them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, when I read them, I'm always like, what would I? And then I never get an answer. Okay, so for... Um, it's, I know this answer because I, I, I actually wrote scenes with songs playing on repeat to these characters. So Nico, um, there is a song by a band that I've probably mentioned like 8 billion times called Pop, Etc. Um, mm -hmm. There's this song called Live It Up. And I just, it just gave me so many feels when it comes to Nico because it's just this real chill layback song that I could just imagine him skateboarding all around to. Um, and so... That that's his, and then for Wes, his would probably be um, it's going to be a tie between. Uh, there's this old song, ninety song by a band called Gin Blossoms called "Follow You Down," um, and highly highly relatable to Wes's unbearable crush for Nico. Um, but also there's this song uh, by John Bellion called 80s Film. And I think I, that's how he imagines um, him and Nico ended up end up making out in the back of a car or something. I don't know. It just, <laughs> that those have, would be the yeah, two songs. Gotta have dreams, gotta have goals. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is not related to the summer of everything, but I did mm -hmm. ask you this during our quarantine pages live show. And I feel like the people need to know. So oh. like in, um, in Running With Lions, Amir, mm -hmm. there's a part where Amir is watching an anime, and then I think Sebastian's like, oh, what are you watching? He's like, oh, some anime or whatever. And I literally made a note while I was reading it for the first time, like, I want names, Julian. <laughs> I want to know. So, I'm feeling better about that. <laughs> for the people, what anime was Amir watching canon canonically in uh, Ready with Lions? <laughs> okay, so... Um, Y'all, I watch a lot of anime and I don't always remember what I'm watching um, <laughs> just because I like to consume the hell out of it. It's, and that is my feel good space, um, no yes. matter what it is. So yes. I want to say, because I started writing that book in late 2014, 2015. And around that time, I was still a Tumblr kid, um, even though <laughs> I was definitely not a kid at that time. Um, oh, yes. So I want to say, because Tumblr introduced me to Haikyuu, I want to say that's what I was watching, the volleyball um, anime. I want to say I, I was watching the first season of that and crying my eyes out watching oh that gosh. first season. It's so good, but it is also for, like the most emotional roller coaster you can go through from that first episode where you're crying because um, Nyata. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's something that happens and you're just like, I'm rooting for this kid. So the last mm -hmm. episode where something else happens, you're just like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. So oh. I want to say it was that. It was either that or um, probably Cowboy Bebop because I'm like a <laughs> huge Cowboy Bebop fan. So it was one of I those. I just feel two. like because it was like, it's like, you know, there's soccer. So I feel like the sports anime is maybe yeah. more alive. Yeah, <laughs> probably more so. Uh, I, I I was watching uh, Free during that time also. So. Also slaps. Also yes. slaps. <laughs> one, of the, one of the best. <laughs> Did you see the trailer? Like they're gonna do a new season? I was like, um, no. <laughs> okay, I'll send that to you later. <laughs> Please do. Like, yeah, y'all. Like, like, you not I, tag me I, in I your anime that. post? Tag yeah. me so I see these things because I. <laughs> I missed. I didn't. I didn't know until like I was scrolling through Twitter, and then like it was like the same day they announced um the next season of High Q, and so I was like, High Q news and free news like all in one day. Like, <laughs> why are we winning? <laughs> I <don't get> it. <laughs> um, we did have a few questions from people in the comments, and if oh, anyone yeah. wants to leave any more, 
feel free. We find <laughs> it. So the first one here says, what is your creative process? Ooh. So big yeah. one. <laughs> that, that is a big one um, because it's, it's changed and evolved over books. So what usually happens um, for me to say I'm gonna sit down and work on something is a, a scene always comes to me. I'm, it's never the main character. It's never the question of, oh, what's the plot gonna be? Because I don't know what plot is, y'all. <laughs> um, it's always a scene comes to me and it just keeps happening over and over in my brain. And I'm like, I really need to write this. I really need to write this. And so then I'll write that down. And then from there, I'll build around the scene. And it's not like a major scene. Like I think for Running With Lions, it was probably the scene where, oh, I do know this. It was the scene um, after they were, it was Sebastian and Amir, Amir after they were finished uh, practicing where it was raining um, and they mm. kissed in the rain. And I was just like, oh wow, what's this? And then <laughs> from, from there, that whole book came. Um, yeah, so it's always like a scene that comes to me and that builds around that. I start to figure out characters, main characters, uh, and then for the main character, I build a friend group usually because that's just how I've always been. I've always had a really great friend group um, who each of them have played a different role in my journey through life. Um, and then I, like, I build out from there and then figure out, okay, what, what is this book really about? Like, it's not about two people kissing in the rain. So what is this book really about? <laughs> it, um, could be. it could be. It could be, yes. I would read that book. <laughs> yes, it would not be a very long book, but that's no, fine. We could be long books it, and I would read it. <laughs> Exactly. Um, and then from there, um, I, see, I could probably show you. Um, I'm not going to show you like the cover or anything, but then from there, like I'll get a notebook and I'll just start doing character pages, themes I want to explore, an outline, stuff like Ooh. that. Um, I build all that in like notebooks and stuff. And then I, when I feel like, okay, I'm finally ready to at least write this beginning part then I'll start sit down and writing. Uh, I think I'm a plotter, but I, sometimes <laughs> I just, I just, you know, go for it. Um, and yeah, and then from there, I just keep on working on it, working on it, working on it. Like a lot of times I'll do the, the first chapter multiple times before I'll move on because I have to figure out what's this main character's voice and, and what's yeah. really, you know, like how is this going to build towards kissing in the rain or whatever it may be, you know, how am I going to build towards this? Um, and yeah, that's how it is. And then I then comes the whole building the long playlist, and I <laughs> Pinterest the hell out of every book. Um, yep, 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 I would yep. love to show that, share that with all y'all, but my Pinterest are like a disaster. Um, <laughs> this is but false. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are um, you like? Um, do you write like chronologically, or are you just like whatever happens happens? I I have been told multiple times to write what like if. If I can't write to write the scene I really want to write, but I can't do it. I, I have know. to write chronologically. And it's the, it's the most painful thing. So I do not recommend. If if you really want to write a scene, write that scene. Um, I but I have to, for some reason, that's just my brain is, it's weird. I don't know. My so brain works that way too. Yeah, I'm like, I can't. But like, they're still here. Like, we can't. <laughs> exactly. Because I'm always afraid if I jump too far ahead, I'll never figure out how I'm going to get yes, to that part right the there. Yes, connective tissue. We don't know her. <laughs> did you, so when, if, uh, with Running With Lions, did you write the kissing scene first or you just knew it like existed? Mm -mm, I just, I knew it existed. I, I have a, in my notebook, I have an actual couple of pages where I just have the title scenes and I'll just jot down notes of the scenes that I really want to get to. And that's how, um, that's how I remember them because I'll, I'll forget uh, very easily. Um, so yeah, I knew, but I did not write that first. And oh, okay. when I finally got to it though, like- I was so gratified. Like what was that moment? Ooh, okay. <laughs> the endorphins that came out in that moment, I tell you, it's, it's <laughs> awesome. And that's why I also like to write chron chronologically because it's almost like building towards like your birthday or building towards a holiday or something. Mm -hmm. It's like you go through all these other days with all this excitement or building towards like Halloween. Everybody knows as soon as October <laughs> first, you're just like, oh, well, when are we going to get to the third first? When are we going to mm -hmm. get to the third first? Yes. So yes, it's yes. Um, I like that. I like putting myself through. I'm a masochist, I guess. I like putting myself through pain <laughs> to get to that part. But then you're like, I've earned it. <laughs> yes. I've earned the scene. <laughs> yeah. So we have another question here from Melissa. It says, what advice Hi, do you have for going out on submission with a deeply personal own voices book? 
And you can, uh, whatever is your, your comfort zone here. <laughs> um, what advice? I think the advice I have, one, is to never give up on yourself in that moment. Because um, I think it's very easy. Like, rejection is hard. And, and that goes for anything in life whether it's rejection for if you're trying to to get um a book deal whether it's rejection from a person you like whether it's rejection when you go to swipe your card and it says oh decline not that that's happened recently <laughs> but i mean it's hard it's a rejection is hard and you have to not give up on yourself in any part of this whole submission querying process. Um, you can feel bad, you can feel sad, you can feel frustrated, but do not give up on that story because that story came to you and you wrote it for a reason. So always have faith in that. Um, but also remember, um, just because a, a story is deeply personal to you, it's the story of your heart, doesn't necessarily mean it's the story that you start with or the story that you build your career with. Um, I know a lot of authors who buy book three or four, that's really the story they wanted to tell with book one. But sometimes you have to, you know, you have to build towards that. You have to, to get your feet under you or you have to, you know, just really build up to that moment, just like with writing. Um, so it's okay if that is not the one that gets you somewhere, but just know that it doesn't mean it's not going to be the one that gets you where you want to be. Um, so hold on to that, but don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on, on that story. Don't say, oh, well, I've been going at this for X amount of time and still hasn't got me anywhere. So I'm throwing it out, never touching it again. It's okay to put it to the side and say, when the time is right, you'll know it. You'll, I'm telling you, it's gonna be like this feeling in your belly and you're just like, all right. I'm ready. Now let's go. Yeah. <laughs> now we're time to do it. <laughs> exactly. Love that. So best of luck to you, Melissa. You're doing great. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Not a question, but they say I'm right in the middle of reading Running with Lions. We love to see it. <laughs> exactly. And if you're right in the middle, let me tell you. I know. I'm like, well, <laughs> did, you, did you get to the rain scene? <laughs> did you, yeah. Did you get there? And also, um, it's it's gonna get a little bit more emotional as you go. So oh, sorry. absolutely. More soccer. More yes. emotions. <laughs> more, but also more that. Willie. So you know, we, very we love true. Willie. That's a big upside. <laughs> <laughs> so unless anyone, I mean, and again, if anyone has any more questions, feel free to drop them. I don't see any more right now. So I'm going to move on. Um, I know you're, we just talked about this because we talked about the Pinterest boards. So I know you're super good about like creating aesthetics and like mood boards and all that stuff. <sighs> yeah. So I'd love to know like, what is your summer 2020 mood board looking like? What are you reading, watching, listening to? What? You got any recs for us? Like, what's up? Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. Besides um, tears and <laughs> and naps. Yes. Um, must have. <laughs> exactly. Summer must have. <laughs> <laughs> um, what am I watching? That's a great question. I loved Love, Victor. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I felt some type of way. <laughs> and, I, and, 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 and and trust me and believe I, I have my, I have issues with every piece of media I consume, but I still love that feeling that 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 series gave me. I'm so happy for it. season two. Uh, yo, I just um, finally started watching Gronish and caught up all on that. And yeah, listen. Again, I have my issues with it, but that show really put me in a good place, and I, I'm happy that it, ex it exists. Um, let's see, movie-wise, I don't know. I've been watching a lot of a lot of cartoons um, because I just yes. the world is sad. Yeah, I can't take it, so I have been watching <laughs> a lot of cartoons. Um, so I don't know if I have any like movie wrecks. Music-wise, Troy Sivan just drops just dropped a new album. Oh, my gosh, yes, huh? yes, yes. Hey. Every time he does that, I'm like, I'm not, I wasn't ready. Like, I wasn't ready either because I, I was I was like scrolling through my music and they're like, new song. I was like, cool. And I was like, new song. And it was like, new album. I was like, yeah, I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. Exactly. So uh, obsessed. I'm obsessed with everything that Grayson Chance is re releasing lately. I, I think he is like brilliant. Um, what else music wise? Uh, I know Lainey has a new album dropping sometime i think later this year so i'm excited about that okay. um book wise 
let's see what, what yeah, like, where do I start <laughs> exactly like um Felix Ever After if you haven't read that I don't know what's going on and mm -hmm. if we need to talk if I need to like lend y'all my copy let me know yes, um but yeah. Felix Ever After is a must read <clears throat> you should see me in a crown I just I don't know I bow down to to Leah Johnson I she's swear she <clears throat> she is the writer and the person I want to be um, and oh, so many different guess. things. Yeah, she's she's just amazing. And that book is amazing. It made me feel so good, but it also talked about so many things that I was just like, oh my gosh, this just feels so good to have this in a book form. Yes. Um, I'm I'm loving how bright her future is. It's like it's oh, sick. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. how good it's gonna be. I was like, um, if you're just getting started with you, you see me to crown. You should see me to crown. It's like I can't imagine. Like so much joy, so much, like joy, so much four, talent. Mm. We're gonna be done. We're gonna be done by book four. I'm telling you. Um, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Uh, let's see. What else am I? Up. Oh, I don't even know how I could mention Darius the Great deserves better. Um, for it. Yes. I, I listen, and then I mean, it's not even deniable how big of a fan of a Dean Karam I am. It's just not even deniable anymore. Okay, y'all. I might as well just be wearing shirts with this face on it all day. Um. <laughs> That book is amazing. Um, I got to read it in its earlier form and then reading it in its final form, like y'all, the first mm. draft he gave me was ridiculously good, but the level it's on right now, I am listening to it on Audible as I'm driving home and just like tears streaming uh -huh. down my face. Yes. Um, it's it's amazing. Um, what else am I loving? Let's see, there is, I started Late to the Party by Kelly Quinlan and I, I'm, I'm loving that one. Mm. Um, Alex okay. London just released Gold Wings Rising, and I, I love the Skybound saga. And I, I'm not a huge, uh, a huge fantasy um, reader, but that book, that series, is ridiculous. Like my heart is pounding every time. Um, and then, uh, Pick Up Surrender Your Son by Adam Sassman comes out on September yes. 15th. I just finished uh, that one. It is yeah, wild. You're just, I was. Like, Bonkers, yo! I just, you're just not ready for the the thrill ride it's gonna take you on. Oh, Cemetery Boys just came out, and uh, oh, you weren't gonna say it. I was gonna say it. It's not even my mood for it. I was gonna say it. <laughs> that book I read at the beginning of summer, and it is what I needed in my life. It is so. I don't even like for a debut book. It's freaking amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. I just, I don't know. We don't have words for it. We just want you to go ahead and, and, and buy it and read it because it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I, I could keep going, but I'll just, that's that's my mood board right now. All these books are just making me feel good and feel so connected to, to people and to stories is like, I feel like what we need right now because the world just constantly reminding us how bad it is and getting to see this work and these amazing writers who are actually like, they're amazing human beings also. That's yeah. that's the great part. It's like, oh yeah, you know, you have a, like a really great book, but the, but the person is just like, oh my gosh, you're terrible. <laughs> have a great book and great people. I don't know, I live yeah. for it. Sadly becoming rarer and rarer these days, but <laughs> <laughs> this class of 2020 authors, that. they're doing great, they're doing great. And I love that like all the books you mentioned are like wildly like affirming, and joyful and beautiful and powerful as well. So it's like, we love to see that yes. every day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa has another question sneaking mm -hmm. in here. <laughs> if you had to recommend your top three anime, another hard question, yeah. what would it be? <laughs> and would Yuri on Ice be included? <laughs> oh, that is painfully hard for me. Cause like I said, I've been watching anime for so long like y'all i was born in the freaking 80s i have been going for a long time if you didn't make me pick my top three i'll do top five i don't okay, I, okay. Do I just i can't listen um, i'm a leader i'm never gonna stop you from like you know i can't make choices so i can't make you make choices and this is not in any particular order because if you ask because I, I can't i can't order them either oh, no, um, but it's no, definitely no. um cowboy bebop it's definitely haiku Yuri on, like Yuri on Ice wouldn't be in there. Oh, yes, oh, Yuri on oh. Ice. Um, but it's, this is too hard for me. I know. <laughs> Way too hard. Um, 
I want to say Sailor Moon. <laughs> That's fine. Who classic? I do. But I'm just like, am I am I bumping someone out in favor of that? That's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm gonna go. No, I'm gonna go um, with. Robotech because that's like an old school fave of mine. And then I'm gonna go with see now I can't do it. <laughs> You're like, there's one more spot. I can't do it. And I, yeah, I can't I can't decide on who who just <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do it. I, I'm gonna stick with those four for right now. Uh, that's no, it. No, my, my, no, I'm gonna go with uh, my hero academia. I'm gonna go with my hero. That's academia. fair. That's valid. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, Paula has another great question, which is, "What is Cooper's favorite book?" <gasps> I think Cooper, who um, was the funnest character I think I've ever wrote like like written i'm sorry he's like i love him so much um i think cooper's favorite hmm. i know i say who his favorite author is in the book and i won't spoil that for you um <laughs> yes but favorite book i think hmm. i don't no, know it's like oh i've never read a book before <laughs> yeah no i've read but i i i, I to, to have to pick one for for Cooper, that's a hard one because Cooper is just this most extravagant. I think you know he what really person I, I think he would I think he would love um Simon versus the Homo sapiens agenda. I think I think mm. that would be one that, that Coop would definitely love and throw at people. Um <laughs> just for how affirming it is uh in so many different ways. And I think he can relate to hardcore. <laughs> That's valid. That would be like his most sold book in the store. <laughs> Every time I come to talk, it's like everyone. It's like everyone who comes in. Have you heard of Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda? <laughs> because if not, we're gonna have a whole class on this. Yeah, um, but I won't spoil who his favorite author is. But you, if you read the book, you'll see. You know who he stands hardcore for. <laughs> All will be revealed. <laughs> Fear <laughs> not. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Regina Renee has an anime question. What is your opinion of Ranma? I never know if it's like half, one, two, one, half, what? <laughs> one I, have two. Not watched, I have not watched Ranma in a decade. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I think I remember, I think I remember liking it. So I, I will say that, but I haven't watched it in so long. Yeah, that's a classic. That's yeah, that's, a, that's classic, classic. And now that you said that, it makes me want to go back and change my list. I'm kicking Robotech off, and I'm putting, <laughs> I'm putting Tenchi on there because like okay. Tenchi was my my jam. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we're set up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to kind of wrap up here, you have an incredibly exciting tour schedule coming up in the next oh, few gosh. weeks, which is linked in the description if anyone wants to know where Julian's going to be in the coming days. So what can we look forward to? How can people join in on those events if they're interested? Are there any tour stops you're especially like psyched about? Um, well, you can, um, if you're on Twitter, you can check my pinned tweet and that gives the whole list of um, the different events. And I also put in there the link that you click on to sign up or register or whatnot for each event. Um, so you can find all that info there. You can also find the information on my website, julianwinters.com um, backslash events. And it's all there for you with buy links for the books if you want to buy from me or the author sure. that I'm in conversation with. Um, super excited about like nervous as hell but mm -hmm. super excited about all those events that are coming out Turn, as far as like i'm actually really psyched about all of them because i purposely pick different authors that have like these different vibes to them that i truly enjoy um that will also keep me on my toes so i'm, I'm really excited about like all of them i'm excited about talking to becky i i know me and adi we're gonna have a great time i know me and cb lee are gonna have a great time I'm terrified of what Nick is gonna ask me. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm worried I'm gonna just stumble over my words while talking to Leah Johnson. I don't know. It's just a lot of <laughs> a lot of great stuff happening um, with the tour. So 
tune into all of those. Yes. Uh, if you're looking I to get be at all of those, <laughs> all of them, yes. <laughs> I mean, I know there's a lot of great events happening online. I, so I tried to pick some some times where I was like, I'm pretty sure this won't interfere with anybody else. Um, <laughs> but yeah, try to tune in for as many as you can. And if you would like a personalized copy of the Summer of Everything um, on the tweet and on my website, it tells you you can order from uh, Little Shop of Stories, which is one of my local independent bookstores. I will be personalizing and I'll be sending out, I stupidly don't have my stickers with me, but I'll send <laughs> out a sticker of a fan uh, of, of, of a commissioned artwork that I got done um, to all the people who buy books through Little Shop Stories. So there's that. that. Yes, and you can peep that fan art on Julian's Instagram, and it's yeah. really great. It's fantastic. Yeah, All of that. One more to do on Monday, so I can't wait. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm really excited about you and Adib. I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like a nerd, like <laughs> putting these two souls together in like one event. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a, a good time, but it's probably also going to be me trying to steer the conversation and talk about Darius more than like That's I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm on I'm on <laughs> <laughs> Will you be drinking tea is the real question. Ooh, Will you both be drinking tea? It seems like every time I'm talking to a deep, he is drinking tea. So I don't, I don't see why not. I, you know, I, th I actually think I might drink tea at every one of the events just in honor of Wes and his obsession with tea. So that's also fair. That's true. It was <laughs> that, like, was that inspired by a D? <laughs> oh no, that is a great question. It's so funny. And I know I'm running over here, but, um, actually, so I, like I said, I started writing, uh, the sum of everything, like way back in the day, um, before I even knew a D, before um, Darius was even um, announced, and then it just so happens because I wrote the sum of everything before I even wrote Javi Rummy Cameron, um, and then all that got announced, and I was just like, "Yo, we are kindred, like we are, we are destined to be the best of friends here. Like this needs to happen." Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, it, it wasn't inspired by Darius, but I love that that exists where you can have. Um, a character like Darius over here and a character like Wes over here that have these these different personalities, these different backgrounds, and yet they have this common interest, which again goes back to how um, we look at people and we look at the different things and the things that we put on, you know, a certain group of people or a certain community and just realize like how interconnected we are as humans. It's not even like it's just ridiculous. Wow. And then I love that there could be like an alternate universe where Wes and Darius have two together. Like, <laughs> listen, I, I love that. And then Darius, yes, and then Darius could go play soccer with you know Sebastian and Amir, and um, what I'm Remy saying. would probably yeah. So many different the ways. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, so we kind of talked a little bit about it, but where can people find you on the internet? Where can they get your books? How can they support you? What's up with that? Um, where can you find me on the internet? Um, you can find me not not on Facebook. I know that much. Um, yeah. you can find me yeah. <laughs> on Twitter at Julian W underscore rights. Um, I'm sorry, Julian Winters was not available. No form of Julian Winters that I wanted was available, so I had to go with uh, those best. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then on Instagram, it's at Winters Julian. And then if you really want to go old school and hop back up on Tumblr, um, I'm just Julian Winters on Tumblr. Uh, and then, like I said, my webpage is julianwinters.com, no www. Um, and then you could support me. I mean, just buy my book from an indie bookstore, please. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I, like, especially during this time, like the support is needed. Every time I talk to a bookseller or any bookstore, it's always a great conversation, but it's always a reminder how much they're struggling right now with not being able to be open and free to bring in the public and whatnot. So if you want to support me, I would love that you try to buy my book from your local independent bookstore or see if you can get it from your local library who also needs as much support as possible. Um, if not, I'm on all the other major retailer websites if you want to um, feel free to buy it from them too. I'm not gonna hate on them. They, everybody gotta eat, so. That's true, that's true. <laughs> so uh, is there anything else you'd like to share or shout about before we go? Put um, into the universe. <laughs> putting into the universe um, that 
we each spend the rest of 2020 not focusing as much, because I know it's impossible not to focus, but not so, focusing as much as how much of a reminder that we've all had that how bad it is, but solely focusing on the fact that we're here and you know we're gonna pursue our dreams and we're gonna make things happen. Like that's all I that's all I want people to to remember is that the current situation is never good. I can go back many years and look at my current situation and say, oh, this is a crappy time. But yes. your future is so damn bright because you're in charge of it. So spend the rest of 2020 looking forward to the future and looking forward to the ways that you're going to make a difference, not only in other people's lives, but in your own life. Yeah, I love that. Oh, I'm going to put that on t-shirt. I need it. <laughs> Daily <laughs> affirmation. Play it on my phone. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. Like I said, I know you have a busy schedule coming up. Release week and the weeks following are always absolutely wild. So I really appreciate you thank taking you. the time to come here and uh, put this energy back into the universe, sort of fix our little technological boo boo. And you know, <laughs> that was a good time. We're not gonna call it boo. We're gonna talk. I'm telling you, it's gonna become like a monthly thing. We're just me and you. That's sit true. Down. That's fine. Whatever you want. I'm here. <laughs> You know, I'm yes. Yeah, we're, we're going to start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm so excited once again for your book to come out on Tuesday. Congratulations again on that. Thank and you. we will see me yelling about it on the internet somewhere for sure. Yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to go. But thank you, everyone, for oh. tuning in and watching and for your questions. And you're all fantastic. And I hope you have a great day.